Hi, I'm Rebecca M. Carroll, and I am with the uh, assistant Assistant Director of Admissions. Assistant Director of Admissions for Portland State. And I would like you to introduce yourself and tell us a little bit about what's new and what's going on at Portland. Yeah. So um, uh, my name is Erin Jensen. I'm the Assistant Director of Admissions at Portland State. And I'm actually originally from the Boise area. So I have been working with students um, interested in Portland State in the Boise area for about eight years now and it's always fun to come back to my hometown and get to meet students and see how the city has changed over time. Um, but I love the Portland area. I see a lot of really great connections between Boise and Portland and the vibe and the feel of the area. Um, Portland State specifically is pretty unique because it is right downtown in the city of Portland. Um, unlike a lot of the other colleges in the city proper, it is right in the middle of downtown. It's a very urban campus, and um, it's so also... That means if someone wanted to go grab coffee somewhere. You have many choices. Many, <laughs> many choices. So, and, and yeah. it, from what I understand from students who I um, have served that have gone to Portland State, the, the area seems very, very... They love the college students, and, yeah. they, and they do a lot to either give them discounts or... Mm -hmm. Yeah, so because we our campus is very integrated into the city, there are a lot of restaurants on our campus, there are stores right around it. We are very much a part of the community in the city of Portland, that's our name. Mm -hmm. um, but we even encourage our students, and in many cases require students, to do community service in the city of Portland as well. So there's a lot of connection with our students giving back to the community as well as the community serving our students too. So. And you have personal experience attending this college. Yeah, so I attended PSU as a graduate student. I um, earned my master's in public administration, so working in public and nonprofit organizations such as a public university. And I did that for six years while I was working full time, so it took me a little bit longer but I was working full time. And one thing I loved about that program is again, that connection to what does it mean to take your education and give back to the people that you live with in your community. And I feel that I do that at Portland State, but I also love my job because that's what the entire education is about. Our motto is let knowledge serve the city at Portland State. And so our undergraduate through graduate students are finding ways to connect the curriculum that they're learning for their own good and to help their family um, rise up socioeconomically, but then also to give back to the people that they, they live with in their area. So that's one thing I absolutely love about Portland State. Yes, and I was really, really intrigued by what you were talking about. You provide a service for financial advising for mm -hmm. college students. Yeah, it's called the Financial Wellness Center. So it's very different than the financial aid office that manages FAFSA and loans and grants and things. The Financial Wellness Center is part of our, it's the same department that has the cashier's office and student records and accounts. But what they do is have counseling with students one-on-one -on -one to come up with budgets, understand the cost of attendance, figure out why their bill is the way it is. So did they maybe drop a class too late? Um, did they forget to pay something? Come up with some solutions to that so that students aren't feeling overwhelmed by the cost of attendance and have a resource to go to when they're feeling unsure about the, the money aspects of school. So we know that college is uh, financially a struggle for a lot of students. Mm -hmm. And so we wanted to provide that one-on-one -on -one service instead of just a faceless office. It becomes person-to-person -person having conversations about individual situations. We've been doing that for about three years now, and it has, it has grown in popularity on our campus. We have a brand new building on campus that has all of our student services in it. So the Financial Wellness Center is in the very first floor there with the financial aid office, the registrar's office, all of the places that a student might need to go visit as well to try to figure out what, what they need to do to continue to be successful in college. Oh, that's so great. And yeah. you also mentioned that you're considered an access school. So we can are. Can you talk about that? Yeah, so there's obviously a variety of different schools in um, the United States. Um, small private colleges, big research universities, public, private, all of that. Um, in the state of Oregon, there are about eight public universities, and um, they really 
are an array of small regional institutions and large research universities. Um, and then their competitiveness level in terms of the admission criteria and the sort of scholarships that they give out can really vary as well. Portland State is an access institution, so that's part of our mission at PSU, and that means that we purposely provide scholarships and um, retention programs and uh, services on campus to help low-income first-generation students access college and be successful in college. One thing that uh, we're very proud of this last year is, according to U.S. News & World Report, we were ranked number one in the state of Oregon for social mobility of students. So that means that our students who are Pell Grant eligible are graduating at the same rates as our students who are not Pell Grant eligible. So that means that their socioeconomic status is not making an impact in their success towards graduation. And that's something that we've worked really hard on at PSU. And because we are an access institution, it's very gratifying to know that our initiatives has, have succeeded, and um, yeah. and that means that we are serving our students equitably. Oh, that's great. Yeah. Can you talk about, I know a lot of students are um, have a 504 for various reasons. It mm -hmm. could be anxiety, it could be um, just a, you know, a ADHD, or they might have uh, a, maybe a disability that's not impacting their success at school, but it's still challenging. So do you have a program or access to students who might want to go to a writing or reading center or math center to get help? How does that Yes look to like? all of those. Okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So first of all, I will mention that we have a disability resource center, the DRC, and it's a very robust uh, service center. So they have multiple counselors who meet one-on-one -on -one with incoming students. They can look over any prior paperwork and testing that a student might have, any type of accommodations that they come in with. But even if a student doesn't come in with accommodations, they can also discuss maybe a student needs to be tested at the point of entry to college. They can help with that as well and establish whether a student does need additional accommodations. They then will come up with a plan for the rest of their degree and um, that might mean extra time testing, separate locations testing, note taking, working specifically with faculty. Um, so some of that is more class based for each class that they're in so they work directly with a faculty member. But then on top of that we do have a writing center that's open to everyone. We have a, a learning center in our library so they do tutoring for pretty much every main subject area. Mm -hmm. Math, science, a lot of languages they'll do tutoring for. Um, writing is in the Writing Center. So we do have additional resources on campus that can be layered on top of whatever the counselors are helping a student with through the DRC. Um, and so we try to help students navigate that at the very beginning of their entry to PSU. So part of the orientation process when students register for their first classes will also be meeting with um, advisors in each of those areas so that they know what those resources are ahead of time and that's have those really meetings good. up front. That's really good because mm -hmm. that's always a, a challenge and everybody feels like, oh, everybody else is getting it but me. So I also am looking at this really nice pamphlet you gave me about the University Honors College. Yeah. So tell I'm me about I'm a huge that. fan of the Honors College. So um, I personally did go to an on I was in an honors program as an undergraduate. And um, I loved my experience. It was very different than what we do at PSU, but some similarities. And I really feel like it was, it was like a small liberal arts college within the larger university. Mm -hmm. And I would say the same at PSU. So before I can talk about the Honors College at PSU, I think it's important to talk about general education at Portland State overall. Most four-year colleges will expect students to take their first two years in gen ed classes, English, math, science, etc., and then start working on their major. What we do at PSU is very different. We take those same classes, the same number of classes that would be the first two years, and spread them out across all four. So students are only taking one general education class per quarter. We're on the quarter oh, system. Nice. So that leaves a typical student with three classes that are up to them. Mm -hmm. That could be exploring different academic areas. It could be um, 
taking prerequisites for a major if they're dead set on what they want to study, but only one class per term is reserved for gen ed. Um, and so it does give students a lot of flexibility and I think a lot more confidence that when they do officially declare their, ma their major, they know that's what they want to study and they can be done in four years. The other thing that's really different about these classes is that they are not subject specific. They're not English, math, science, etc., like you would normally see in a general education list. They have titles like Portland and Race and Social Justice and the Work of Art. They are multidisciplinary. We call them thematic. Okay. So students are learning about a broad topic using multiple disciplines or subject areas to study that topic. Mm -hmm. So for instance, the class that's called Portland might study the city of Portland through the lens of architecture and civil engineering and talk about how the city is laid out and what the buildings are like. Then a few weeks later might talk about ecosystems and urban watersheds and the Willamette River Valley. And then maybe talk about the comic book scene and the film scene in Portland and how that's been heating up over the last few years. So students still are learning different subject areas, but it's all incorporated into a big topic. And they start to see how everything is interconnected. That's the way the real world is. Everything kind of has different connections to every other, everything else. So it's a very different approach to learning about different subject areas that we find students are more engaged in. They're picking their subject areas, themes, out of a list as opposed to being told what to take. So students have a lot more agency over what that general education looks like and how it ties into their own interests all four years. Um, so we call that university studies. That's our standard general education. The Honors College is the alternative to that. It's just a different way of taking general education all four years. It is slightly smaller class sizes, 25 instead of 35. 35 is still pretty small for a general yes, education class. Um, but it's only 800 students total, freshmen through seniors. So it's a much smaller community of students who have applied to the Honors College and are um, self-identified as being very self-motivated, um, looking for additional challenges, and um, wanting to kind of take that extra step over what the bare minimum requirements would be. I typically advise AP students, IB students, dual credit students to consider the Honors College because those programs are very similar to the idea of an Honors Program or an Honors College. Just taking things a little bit further than the bare minimum. The Honors College also comes with additional academic advising, Priority registration, getting to pick classes before everyone is really nice. Mm -hmm. um, community events, a separate housing option so students can live together if they're in the Honors College. So it really has a cohort feel for students, more so I would say than our general education, our standard general education where you might see different students in each class. Honors is going to be probably the same group of people each year, and so you really do get to know them well mm -hmm. and rely on them as, as friends and classmates and colleagues. And you do the special community service together and yep. things like that. Yeah, yeah. There's value in it. Yeah. So tell me a little bit about the weather, because I do <laughs> have some students who think they just want a sunny, weathered area to live in. Well, uh, so the way I describe the weather in Portland, so I'm from Boise again, so let's just remember that I'm used to weather in Boise, and I can say that we also have all four seasons in Portland. I just don't think the highs and lows are as extreme in Boise, and we probably get a little more precipitation. So, so if you um, like snow. If you like snow, we still get snow in general in Portland occasionally. We are about 45 minutes from Mount Hood, which is great skiing. So lots of snow up there. Do you, are but, you connected as a college to, do students get a discount or anything like that? We have an outdoor program that helps students get up to the mountain and back again. I don't That's think great. they do. I don't know. I'd I have to check to about if they do discounting. For, <laughs> I am not a skier, no. <laughs> Um, do, yeah, yeah. generally do. I'm not as much of a snow person, so more of a rain person. I love yeah. the rain. Um, and actually, it doesn't rain as much in Portland as I would expect it to, based on the way people presented it to me before I moved there. Um, I love the summers in Portland. It is, it's just not too hot, and it's not dry heat either. It's a really nice mixture. Yeah. yeah, and it's a really, I call it temperate weather. It's it's not as high and low as I experienced when I lived in Boise. So 
Um, and then it's also about 45 minutes to the coast. So students who are wanting to get off and hang out in the at the beach, um, we're not talking California beach, we're talking Oregon beach, but, <laughs> but to hang out by the coast and, um, and be in sort of that misty environment, you can go one direction for that or go the other direction for the snow at Mount Hood. So you get a really nice mix of everything when you're situated in Portland, you have that whole outdoor environment right at your fingertips, and I think it's perfect. Yeah. Well, I thank you very much. I think this is very informative, and I think if students want to have a little more uh, just uh, description of how you approach education, you need to listen to this, and we'll tag your um, Portland State, and but tell kids how do they get a hold of you so we can yeah. put it in the script. Yeah, so I'm available a variety of ways, definitely by email and phone. Um, so my email address is admissions.aaron at pdx.edu. My name is spelled E R I N. And um, I have two numbers now. I have my office number, and then I have a text number. So I've been, yeah, I've been in, in telling students just text me questions. I can often respond to you faster by text than sitting down at my email and responding that way. Okay, and we will put both her numbers in. Yeah. And we will list her email, and if you have any further questions, let then me know. please get a hold of Portland State Admissions. It sounds like it's a great place for someone who especially wants that city feel, yep. but not too huge, and, yeah. and really have some interesting experiences. So if you want to go to a college that has a community feel, where you feel like the people that, you know, the area loves college students, which is, it's important, mm -hmm. then I would definitely check out Portland State. Great. Thank you. Thank you.